Hello and welcome back and today I want to do a hardware review of the brand new QNAP 8Bay JBOD NAS expansion. This is the TLD800C, it's one of many NAS expansion devices unveiled from the guys at QNAP. Now I've already done an unboxing video over on Span TV and I recommend you check that out but today I wanted to focus a lot more on the hardware. I want to talk a lot more about what this thing is capable of and more about what you should expect from it in a very realistic capacity. So occasionally my head's going to be up here, but I want you to focus on this. Now, the D800C arrives for give or take around 425 to 450 quid, depending on where you shop around, and that includes your tax. Of course, visit the guys at span.com, they know what they're doing. You know, 25 years in the NAS biz, go for it. They've got these bad boys, they might help you. But this. Um, this 8-bay J-Body expansion is for those of you out there that have reached, uh, you know, are reaching the limits of your available capacity and are thinking about expanding your existing range. You don't want to buy a new NAS. You want to make sure all of your pathways or your directories all stay the same. On top of that, you don't want to buy a new NAS and repurpose your drives because you've already had them running for a number of years. Well, you want to get a new solution you can bolt on to your existing array and therefore add capacity to it rather than trying to upgrade the whole thing. And NAS expansion can act in many ways as a great alternative to upgrading your whole system. First and foremost, it can be a lot more cost effective. And two, it can be a lot easier to do rather than a lot of the technical rebridging, repairing, changing and relocating of data that a new upgrade purchase might bring you. But you have to know what you're getting. I did a whole overview of the QNAP NAS expansion TR and TL series. Um, a little while ago, so I recommend you check that video out. But what I will highlight is this is a non-hardware RAID device. It's JBOD. What that means is just a bunch of drives. It is an 8-bay device, an enclosure that can hold 8, 3.5-inch hard drives, and those hard drives will need to have their RAID handled by a connected host system. This is very much a client device. So if you connect this to your PC or Mac system, you'll have to do either a software RAID or have a hardware RAID card pre-installed to create a RAID out of it. In a QNAP, when you connect this via USB on the rear, it's USB 3.1 Gen 2, I'll talk about it later on. Once you connect it, your QNAP nodes will see it as multiple available drives, and then it allows you to either add them to your existing RAID array, your RAID 5, your RAID 10, your RAID 5, whatever, um, or it will allow you to create a separate RAID where the NAS system will have all of those extra drives in their own RAID, which you can then work with accordingly. You can mirror it to your existing RAID system or use it as separate directories. Now, because it's an 8-bay, you can create one large RAID if you choose, or you can create four of them in a RAID 5 and two of them in separate RAID 1s if you choose for different purposes, surveillance, multimedia, that sort of thing. But it's worth highlighting that this all takes CPU power. So if you do that, you could affect the performance because the CPU and the NAS are going to have to work a little bit harder. But there has been a, you know, a real growth in uh, JBOD expansions. It you know, kind of went dormant for a little while because people wanted enclosures that had their own RAID. And hell, when you buy a NAS, one of the appealing factors of a NAS is that it includes its own RAID configuration settings and it can support its own RAID. But JBOD gives you a huge amount of flexibility. And the TL series from QNAP has given us a lot of different kinds of JBOD, many of which arriving with PCIe cards supporting things like SAS that allow you to get these enormous speeds between your NAS and the expansion. And that's a big deal. Because a NAS expansions have one big bottleneck among any other thing that can go wrong, and it's to do with the connection between it and the host system, be it the PC, the Mac, the Windows system, whatever. And once you connect these two devices up, it doesn't matter if you have 4, 8, 12, 20 drives, if the connection between this device and the NAS is not sufficient to have a wide enough bandwidth for all of those available read and write, uh, read and write operations from those drives, you're going to have a bottleneck. Now, this is why I want to highlight USB 3.1 Gen 2, because this takes advantage of um, a 10 gigabits per second available connection. It allows you to connect to the device and have up to a 1,000 megabytes per second read-write with the right media. Now, in um, QNAP's own testing in a RAID 0 environment, it, it largely maxed out the connection in the high 900 megabytes per second with traditional hard drives. If 
you utilize this in a RAID 5, you will certainly see a dip in that uh, write speed, probably around five or 600 megabytes per second, 700 at a push, but the right media will give you a lot more performance, but just make sure you use a powerful enough NAS to support it. In PC and Mac systems, if you're using a software RAID, you're probably gonna see lesser write performance, but the read will still be pretty damn good. But this is a device that's built for flexibility in your NAS expandability, whether it's with you're expanding an existing RAID system or you're creating a mirrored platform to work with. Now, it arrives with these eight bays of storage built into the front, and each one can be locked. There's a key that arrives with the accessories that I've talked about more in the NAS expansion video. There's screws, there's a cable lock, there's a um, keys for those individual trays. There's everything you need there, along with a USB cable that we're gonna talk about later on. Now, the trays are plastic in design. Sorry for the noise there, it's quite not close to the mic. Now, these click and load trays have got screw holes, for two and a half inch media, as you can see. They're also clicked and loaded on the side, so you can remove them there. Install a hard drive, and again, a Seagate Iron Wolf drive there, subtle plug, I know. You can stick that in there, and it really is that straightforward to install a hard drive inside this bad boy. Boom, do that eight times, you're sorted. You don't even need to fully populate this device, by the way, from the off. Whenever a number of drives you put inside, that is what the connected host NAS will see and will be able to work with. So it's like any NAS, with NAS is um, not needing to be fully populated from the off. You can add drives as you go, and this has that same logic. So with these trays, they are SATA in connection. So again, each drive, uh, allow SATA media, which generally in terms of hard drives will give you something between 150 and uh, 260 megabytes per second, depending on the enterprise grade of the drives. Things like Ultra Stars and Pro Series drives, you'll be getting that 200 plus read and write from each bay. Um, and again, in, a write, in the right rate configuration, it'll add somewhere between 70 to 100 megabytes per second in terms of your overall performance with each additional drive you add. Um, on the top, we have LEDs above every single one of those drives, denoting access and health and performance, as well as three more LEDs based here on the side. There's ventilation on the base, as you can see there for each of those drives. There's ventilation on the side on that thing, and it is a metal chassis all the way. If we look at the rear of this, we can take a good look at those ports and connections. Let's bring it to camera first. Have a good look at those and of course what we're looking at is that side more than anything else now if we pop it there we can have a look now on the rear of this device we can see these two pcie slots now unfortunately this is not a pcie upgradable device in my unboxing video i kind of speculated about it given that there's a label here on the top but only the s series devices not the c's can be expanded with a card. So whether you put in those devices, adding a RAID card, or um, arriving with some of the SAS ports that these devices are arriving with, those are things that you can entertain on a JPOB, but this doesn't have that facility. On top of that, if we take a look, we have a switch here for controlling um, beeps and noises, alerts and stuff like that, where you can mute it with regards to the drive being accessed or alerts. On top of that, on the base, we have an automatic control for those two rear fans. And those two rear fans there, they can have their RPM increased or decreased based on noise and, uh, you know, noise um, noise based on like heat and stuff like that. And of course, if things do get hot inside, that's where one of the alert beats might kick in. But what's real interesting here is that USB 3.0 port. Now, once again, USB 3.1 Gen 2 means that you are looking at 10 gigabits per second connectivity. So a thousand megs, which is great. And if you're using a NAS that has USB 3.1 Gen 2, like some of the newer gen stuff, like the um, QNAP Thunderbolt expansions, where they've got both, in some cases, Thunderbolt and USB support, or you're looking at the end series and stuff like that, a lot of them have got USB 3.1 Gen 2 via Type C built into them. They're quite, you know, you're going to get quite a lot out of this, and you'll end up in those cases with a powerful enough CPU to support multiple RAIDs at once. Now, it arrives with a USB A to C cable as well. So there's a C cable for this end and an A, um, I'm sorry, an A cable here at the other end for connecting it to your NAS. So even older legacy devices can be connected to this, but you will, of course, in older generation USB 3, only get up to five gigabit per second. So at very most, 500 megabytes per second read write. So that is the bottleneck that we were talking about earlier on. 
There is some client software that you can download from QNAP that's free for PC and Mac that lets you monitor and see how the device is doing in access, but you will have to rely on hardware controllers, software and hardware on your PC, Mac or NAS system to take care of the RAID. <clears throat> now, as much as I like the TL box, and the majority of these expansions that I talked about when we were doing a whole overview of the expansions, there are only a couple of things that I don't like, but they are worth highlighting, and they are about safety and noise. These are very minor points that will definitely only affect a small percentage of users, but it is worth discussing nevertheless. First and foremost, I don't like the fact that the connection of USB is not screwed in. There is a cable lock. That's what this little circle here next to the USB uh, port is for. And if you connect the USB cable, you can use the tie inside to make sure that cable doesn't slip out. Let me show it to you here. Let's get the cable tie. I can see it there in the background. And you effectively connect this device into that little circle area and it holds the cable in place. Now, with an expansion device, it's worth highlighting that because these drives are being seen individually by the host system, the last thing you want is for it to appear like drive media has been removed unsafely. So the idea of that cable being disconnected is a big, big no-no. So the last thing you need is the ability for that cable to fall out. I understand that the USB-A end or the host end is not going to be screwed in because NAS has been around for so long that older generation NAS buyers who are buying this to expand their existing arrays, you know, they couldn't have known that this device would have existed. So I don't expect it to be screwed at that end. But at this end, I'm surprised they're not using some kind of screw lock. We've seen it in other devices and we've seen both USB and eSATA expansion devices arrive in a screwed in form. I'm just not sure that the cable holder here is as you know, reliable as that. Now, the fact that these trays have got screw locks built into the front, to me, suggests that there is awareness of the idea that these drives need to be secured from accidental removal to, you know, theft. And I think screw locking that external cable is a part of that for me. But it's more than that. My other problem with the device, and not a huge problem, once again, is the fact that this cable is like a meter long. It is not very long. And this is gonna to have to be in incredibly close proximity to your other NAS device. Whether you're connecting to this with a PC or a Mac, where proximity is gonna be important. This is a full metal NAS chassis. It's an eight bay at that with two rear fans. It is not going to be the quietest device. So being in close proximity with it is not going to be the nicest experience. And if you're you know, very sensitive to noise, you're not going to enjoy it. Also, such a short cable really, once again, makes me come back to that idea of a cable being accidentally dislodged. If this cable is like a meter long, this device is about 30 centimeters wide as it is, and the connection port is here. So what if you're using a NAS over here? You're going to lose 30 to 40 centimeters just by the depth of the devices alone. So one meter is not a lot to be playing with as far as an expansion cable is. And once again, expansions, that should be your biggest fear, accidental disconnection. So if these devices are going to be in close proximity, the expansion and the original NAS, then this isn't a concern. Likewise, if they're going to be in a location that's not going to be interfered with or passed through very regularly, again, not a concern. But it would be remiss of me not to highlight that point. Now, the final thing I want to do is show you what's inside this device. You may have seen these screws that I keep catching my arm. It's because I've already unscrewed the top of the chassis so we can take a good look inside. That's how we found out about the lack of PCIe bays inside this. So if we remove that tray, I'm sorry about the noise near the mic, we can see what exactly makes this tick. So let's first go for that side there. Let's go for the side where those PCIe card slots might have once existed bring it up to camera as you can see on the top of the screen there it is a power connector going into that controller board with that power connector going all the way from the PSU directly into that now that board is what's supporting a secondary controller board inside there at the bottom you can just see it with those top loaded slits and that is pretty much what's handling all of those connections on the other side of that rather bare 
um, circuit board inside you can see there the main board there that's going to be doing all of the work and quite fat lines there for a circuit board and again it handles pretty much everything we even have that little chip there that's going to be doing where a lot of the magic happens and we've got two of the chips right there but again no utilization of PCIe inside this there's a huge amount of ventilation and it's also worth highlighting if we take a little look that the top vent the top panel there it would appear that LCD panel may just be hollow for the chassis as well though we will be powering this up in some of our software overviews later on now that is a huge amount of ventilation in a metal chassis so temperatures are going to be very very cool inside this but once again it does lend to that idea about noise being generated by this device whilst in utilization and once again that may be something that affects uh, your close proximity with this device in a negative way so do bear that in mind but I still think in far of expansion devices and QNAP kind of reinventing all of their expansion series for Thunderbolt, for USB, for hardware RAID and for SAS ones where a lot of the TL series are going to arrive with a SAS card for your client PC, Mac or NAS system they're very hard to ignore and at this price point for an 8 bay expansion it still makes it one of the best options right now in terms of external JBOD storage. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Do click like to learn more. We'll be doing a little bit more with this device very, very soon. And on top of that, do click subscribe if you want to learn more. I'm sorry top of my head has been sliced off the majority for this video. I'll come back down here. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.